Now, before we continue, this Fir'aun, who he is and what time he lived in, has been a subject of great debate and controversy. And the fact of the matter is that in our Islamic sources, in our Muslim sources, it is very, very clear his lineage and you know the, the name of Fir'aun and his lineage. And so the scholars mention that there were, if, if we go back to the books of history, the books of Tariq, like that of Ibn Kathir and At-Tabari and many others, and likewise we return back to the books of Tafsir, and we will find very, very clearly that the following, I will just summarize the main points in, 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 in the following. First of all, that there was a series of Fir'auns who were present at the same time of Ibrahim salam to Musa salam, right? So Ibrahim salam to Musa salam is a period of roughly around 200 years. In that time period, there was a series of rulers whose names are given in our history books who also existed at, at the same time, right? And they were the, those who ruled over Misr. And so from the first of them is mentioned Sinan bin Alwan. Sinan bin Alwan. And the genealogy of these Fir'auns, they go back to the son of um, uh, Sam, who is called Lawith, Lawith, and from him came there's an offspring called Amliq, 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 and from him came many, many, many people who were known as the Amaliqa, Amaliqa, and you will find this word often in the Torah, in the Bible. The, Amal the Amalekites. And these are hated. They're always spoken of in a, in a hateful way, right? As the enemy. They're repeated many, many times in, in the Torah. The, so this is the Amalika. In our, in our sources, they are known as the Amalika. And so these, these tribes, they originated out of Yemen and they moved northwards and they conquered many places. So they conquered the Hejaz region the Hijaz region, around Mecca. And so one of these Amalika was known as Faran. Faran. And that's why the area around Mecca and the mountains around Mecca, they are no, it is known as Faran. Tracing back to that individual from the Amalika who you know, uh, conquered and, and controlled that, that area. That's why it is said, and that's why this is actually mentioned in the Torah, the, 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 the wilderness of Faran, referring to the area around Mecca. Likewise, they moved further north and they conquered parts of Sham and across even Iraq. Okay? So, in the time of Ibrahim salam, to Musa salam, there was a stretch of land that was conquered by these people. And these people were warlike people they were they were into war and conquest and so they conquered the region from the top of syria if you imagine the top of syria here next to turkey the coastal region so the coastal region coming down towards lebanon coming down towards palestine moving across the sinai peninsula and across to the top of what today we know to be egypt right which is the top very fertile region of egypt where the river Nile it comes and it splits and then it goes all into the Mediterranean, right? This is the Nile, it comes up and it splits in so many different rivers and this very green, fertile area right at the top, this area, they were in rule at that time, right? They were in rule at that time. So these are Arab rulers, not Egyptian. They are not Qibti. They are not Qibti, Okay. As for the original rulers of Egypt, they were forced further south. They were forced further south. So they were south of what we today call Egypt. They were not the rulers whom Ibrahim or Yusuf or Musa alayhi salam interacted with. Right? So this is a huge difference between what is in our history books 
the Islamic history books and what is in or what is implied in the Torah and likewise in all of Western scholarship and all of what they call the you know Egyptology, the, the science and study of, of Egypt and the history of Egypt and whatever else. And because they've made this fundamental mistake in history, when they've tried to research these things and they've gone to these uh, the, the, it's a mistake to call the rulers of Egypt pharaohs because they were never ever known as pharaohs. This is, this is a mistake. They were never known as pharaohs. This is a mistake that's been made where the name of Fir'aun has been extended to these Egyptian rulers. This is a mistake in history. They were never called uh, 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 pharaohs. In fact, one of the historians, Muslim historians, Al-Mas'udi, he mentions how he went to Egypt and Misr, and he asked many of the specialists from the, the, from the Qibtis, right? They asked him, tell me about the origin and the meaning of this word Fir'aun. And they said, well, uh, we've got no idea because it's not, from, it's not from our language. We don't know what its, its origin is. He said they couldn't tell me what it is. Because Aslan, it is not from the, 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 the Qibtis from their language. Rather, as, as we shall, uh, as, 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 as is made clear, Fir'aun is an actual name. So Fir'aun. You see, Haman, Qarun. You see many other similar names. Uh, Shamsun, um, Jad'un. Right? They all follow the same pattern. These are well-known Arab names. Okay? So, so this is the first thing we should very, very clearly understand. That the, those who were in rule at the time when Ibrahim alayhi salam came to the first Fir'aun, Sinan bin Alwan, and there was a story between him, his wife Sarah. This was from the Amalika. Then after him, there were a series of five or six other, other rulers. The one in the time of Yusuf alayhi salam, his name is Ar-Rayyan bin Al-Walid. Ar-Rayyan bin Al-Walid, an Arabic name, right? So this was the time uh, when Yusuf al-Salam Yusuf al went uh, to this location and you know he was given a position and uh, the whole story of in, in Surah Yusuf it takes place in relation to this individual Ar-Rayyan bin Al-Walid and then from him after him came a number of other rulers after him came there's a couple of other names and then comes one called Qabus Qabus bin Mus'ab and then comes Al-Walid bin Mus'ab Al-Walid bin Mus'ab so this is the one that our Muslim sources identify as the Fir'aun. Now there's the discussion uh, as to what his actual name is and the evidence from the Quran very strongly suggests that Fir'aun is his actual name. Fir'aun is his actual name. Because the, the, way the, the, the way this word is used, it's used as a proper name. Right? All the evidence in the Quran very, very clearly indicates that. Because there's, there's no definite article attached to it. Al, it's not pluralized ever. And it's mentioned along with other names, in between the names. Qarun, Fir'aun, Haman, or Haman, Haman, Fir'aun, Qarun. Right? So all the evidence suggests that it's an actual name of Fir'aun. So this name Fir'aun, because he was a tyrant, it was then extended to include all of the other previous six or seven rulers who are from the Amalika. So then they became known as the Fir'auns, Al-Fara'ina. So then this word was pluralized uh, that, we, that we normally see, as a, and it was made as a title, Al-Fara'ina, even though Fir'aun was that one individual. And then mistakenly that label was then given to all of the Egyptian kings in the whole of history. Before Ibrahim Islam and after Musa Islam, and this is a mistake in the history of Al Qibt of Egypt, right? They were never known as Fir'auns or as Pharaohs. So, because of that mistake, and there are also some ideological reasons as well. So, you see, the Jews, for example, they deliberately um, make it appear as if. Musa alayhi salam was present in Egypt till about 1200 BC. So they extend the stretch of Bani Israel in Egypt from what is really 180 years to 500 years. Right? To make it appear as if they were there for a very, very long time. And they were there in the time of the Egyptian 
so-called pharaohs, right? And they have an ideological reason to make that fallacious claim, to make that false claim, right? Because they can say, we deserve a piece of that land, right? So that's a fallacious claim, it's a clear fallacious claim. And the reality is that the time of Bani Israel in Misr was between around 1720 to 1570, right? Between 1750, let's say even, between the middle of the 18th century BC to about the end of the 16th century BC. It's about 180 years in total they spent in, uh, in, in, uh, in, um, in Misr. And that's clear even from the lineage. If you take it from Ya'qub alayhi salam, how many people between Ya'qub alayhi salam? We said Musa bin Imran bin Qahith bin Azir bin Lawi bin Ya'qub. That's basically four generations Four generations, and four generations is 150 you know, uh, years at the most, right? So clearly, it, c- it can't be a period of 500 years. So now we've explained Musa, uh, Musa, his lineage, and we've explained Fir'aun and who he is. This, these rulers were known as the Amalika, as I mentioned. If you go into Western scholarship, you will find that these people are identified by the by by the label Hyksos. Hyksos. H Y K S O S. H Y K S O S. This name was given to them by Greek historians. But the meaning of the word Hyksos is the same as the meaning of Amalika, but you would never know if you if you didn't know this history. And you would never know from the word Hyksos that these were actual Arabs. Right? And so this is not really discussed openly, you won't find it in popular textbooks or in the popular stories of Musa and Fir'aun for whatever reason. But this is what is in our books. And that's why that's, that's what explains the fact that these people can't find any mention of the story of Musa alayhi salam amongst the Qibtis, the Qibti rulers, because it was never the issue was never with the Qibti rulers. So that's why in the archaeology and everything and in the history, the Egyptians were very good at history. They recorded all of their rulers, the names from three, four thousand, you know, thousand years back, um, even further back, all the names, all the dynasties, and they can't find anything. Right? And that's because they've got their history wrong. And what we find in our sources is correct. Is correct. And there is an admission now uh, amongst, you'll find that in the past 20, 30 years, that they are admitting, because the, the archaeology has been gone for like 70, 80 years, 100 years now, and not finding anything. But now in the past two, three decades, there's an admission that there was a, a dynasty called the Hyksos dynasty. They were Amalekites, which means Arabs, and that their time coincides with the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam. Right? And this is the haqq that we have. We had, we had for, you know, from our sources.